Hello, Huntsteaders. So here we are back in the garden. Looking over here at tomato row. And I think I'm going to do a little something different this year. I might keep a few of my containers going. But I was at Home Depot and I found a trough that I think I'm going to replace the center at least one, two, three, four, five with. And it's in the back of the car right now because anything fits in a Prius. So here we are at the utility Prius. Look at that galvanized steel container. Six feet long, two feet wide, about two feet high. I'm gonna make good use of that in the garden this year. All right, so this is it. It's a Balin Country galvanized steel tank or container. Six feet long, two feet wide, two feet high. I'll put it over here in the middle of tomato row. I make uh, space some of these tomato plants out or these uh, watering buckets, self-watering self buckets over here maybe or elsewhere in the garden but first things first i gotta get some drainage holes in here it does have a little uh water attachment thing over here but we're not going to use that so i gotta flip it upside down and drill some holes so i'm using an electric drill with a half inch bit goes through these things pretty quickly going to take a while and since I don't want my nice bark garden loaded with uh, steel shards I'm just going to vacuum them up. But that's the plan. Poke this baby full of holes. All right so there we go that only took about 10 minutes. Got holes drilled all in the bottom of this thing. In retrospect, I probably should have done this in the driveway because I do have little metal shards that kind of flew off here and there. I'm going to pick the big ones up. Uh, but if I had done it in the driveway from the beginning, I could have avoided a lot of that. However, most of them stayed up here and the vacuum did work for that. So mental note, if you're going to drill holes in your tub, don't do it on your beautiful wood chip garden floor. Do it on the driveway. All right, next step, i got to get it in place. I'm going to have to move these existing plants. And that's going to be tough, man. My um, sun gold tomato there in the middle is all interwoven with the fence. And those things are delicious. And it's still, I did a video on them a couple of weeks ago. But I left this thing over the winter, and it's still producing like crazy. I picked, look at all these fruits. I picked about 10 or 12 of them off this morning. Every day now, they're just ripening up. And this guy here, this Monmoto tomato, these guys are starting. Look at this guy. He's almost ready. They're yellow. So, anyways, I'm going to have to disentangle him somehow and maybe move him around to the back um, on this side of it. And leave it over here although there's not a lot of room over here but i could probably do that with one or two plants i do need to be able to get back here to my composter but it's getting toward evening on sunday so i think i'm going to leave this till tomorrow and get on it in the morning hello huntsteaders happy monday morning February 24th, here I am back in the garden working on my galvanized steel Balin Country water tank planter. So yesterday we moved these two tomatoes and salvaged them. This is my sun gold, which is 
still prolific. It, it produces all winter and I want to keep it going. It's got some good growth down here, new growth. So I want to keep this going as long as I can. And here's my Monmoto tomato. You can still see there are several tomatoes on this thing. So I wanted to keep them going, see how long into the year they'll fruit. But I got this thing centered where I want it. And I got a base of uh, pebbles down. So the next step is I'm going to put some um, landscape cloth on here uh, to separate the potting soil from the drainage rocks. That's the next step. All right, so here we go. I got some landscape fabric down there covering the rocks. It's a little bit doubled up, but it's thin. All we need is the water to get through it. Now I got to put some uh, potting soil in here. Hope I got enough. I'm going to do a mixture of potting soil and compost. Hello Huntsteaders. Here we are back out in the garden. Beautiful spring day. Fat Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. I have my galvanized water tank all set up. Took a whole bunch of dirt, even with the about three inches of gravel at the bottom, that thing took about, I want to say 12 cubic feet or yards or whatever it is of uh, potting soil. Plus I worked in some uh, vermiculite and some worm castings and some compost. Let that thing sit overnight. I'm going to put some new plants in there today. And I moved my other buckets around. I was able to save my cherry tomatoes, my sun golds, and my monmono tomatoes here. My wife and I carefully picked them from, from the wire mesh and moved them around to the back. And you can see this thing produces so well, I didn't want to kill it or replace it yet. And this guy is starting to get some tomatoes that are going gold. So let me get started putting some uh, some crops in this baby. Good morning, Huntsteaders. So here we are back in the garden. And here's my galvanized steel water tank planter, all set up. Started to put some plants in it. Right now I just have a few peppers, three tomatoes along the back. They're all indeterminate, so they're gonna grow up on the fence. Like my sun gold here and my little Monmoto tomato. Look we got one back there that's ripening up. I got a few peppers up front and just a bean in there. I think I got a little onion that I replanted from someplace that I pulled up. So I'm loving this thing. It looks great there. Plenty of room for it. It's nice and wide, nice and deep. The thing that um, the difference between these self uh, watering buckets. And one of these big planters is the condition of the soil. After a while, uh, the plants get root bound in these in these buckets, and it's difficult to to keep the the soil rich and fertilized. And I notice that the life of the plant usually isn't all that long. But in my raised beds, you know, my veg drugs here, the one that I made here in my uh, galvanized containers, you can really condition the, the dirt, the soil for growing. And that's what I'm trying to do with this one. I'm hoping that the tomatoes will be um, a lot more bushier and healthier this year than they've been in the past in the buckets. Now I'm still, I've still got a couple here right beside it. So we'll be able to use those for, for comparison. And I'm going to do something. I have some cabbage over here and some cauliflower over on this end. And I'm going to be transplanting those out. And then if my tomatoes in the back here, if they don't make it, I don't know what I'll put in there. Maybe peppers or something. But it'll be interesting to see how the tomatoes that I planted in my big planter here, in the galvanized planter, compare to the ones in the buckets. All right. Thanks for watching.